Uh, this week, my report on employee financial participation, or EFP, was passed by the plenary by a large majority. Uh, EFP has uh, a lot of advantages and uh, uh, with, when workers take part in company proceeds you tend to find that they have a, a greater uh, loyalty to the company, they have a, a lot of interest in making sure that the company makes profits and it also allows them to uh, have a greater job security. Uh, for the companies, uh, they tend to invest more in uh, training, in education of their workforce because they, they're confident that their workforce is going to stay with them a long time. It, it's a very, very successful formula and uh, the most famous one, I think, in the UK is the John Lewis Partnership. Uh, one of the other advantages is it can, uh, where there, there is a problem with uh, succession, for instance, particularly in SMEs, be a model for a, a worker takeover when there is no, uh, no one to take over when the owners retire. So uh, we had a very, very good uh, working with, our, our part, with, with the other uh, political groups on this file and it got a broad level of support and what we're now suggesting is that the Commission come forward with some ideas on sharing back best practice across the European Union and uh, also some ideas on how we can catch up with the United States in this area. <coughs> We've also passed a, a resolution this week on plastic waste and, and this uh, fitted in very well with uh, some of my constituency work this week, last week uh, when I went to visit the Marine Conservation Society headquarters in ross on wye uh, I learnt there that uh, plastic waste in particular uh, is a huge hazard for marine, for marine wildlife. Uh, of course, it's a, it's, it's a hazard for a wildlife in, in general. Uh, animals pick up plastic waste and it could cause them, it can kill them. Uh, in addition, of course, it, the, the canals of, of the West Midlands, you can only have to look at the litter. So it's an eyesore and it's also a hazard. It's also a waste because uh, a lot of this waste is reusable. So we've been concentrating on, um, on, on recycling, on, on reuse. We want to get 75% across Europe recycling and reuse. In the UK, in fact, we're, we're, we're doing pretty well. And in my own local authority in Litchfield, we've been leaders, uh, one of the leading authorities in this area for many years. And from, from my own um, recycling boxes, I can put all plastic waste in my recycling boxes. There's no such thing in, in Litchfield district as recyclable or non-recyclable plastics. It all goes down into the recycling scheme. And this is what we're aiming to, we're, again, we're aiming to spread best practice across Europe uh, in this respect. Exactly a year ago, consumers across Europe were horrified to find that horse meat had been traded as, as beef uh, in what is now known as the horse meat scandal. Uh, this week we've passed a, a resolution to address fraud in the food chain and it uh, deals with um, uh, cooperation across Europe uh, to try to make sure that we can trace all this food travelling across Europe. Uh, the, the, the problem was largely in the processed meat sector. In the farming sector we've actually got very, very good traceability already. Uh, th there is no reason why we shouldn't uh, improve the traceability uh, in the industrial en uh, end of the, of the food production chain. So uh, there's been a, a, a real will here to learn, from best, learn best practice and also cooperate across, across Europe. Uh, I think f even now, uh, a year on from the, uh, from the horse meat scandal, uh, consumers can have a lot more confidence that what they, what they buy is what, what it says on the label. Um, Technologies such as, uh, as uh, gene uh, mapping means that we can quite easily tell now uh, what is in even mints. We can tell that it's not beef, it's horse meat. And uh, th we've seen authorities across Europe doing, uh, doing tests to ensure that what is in processed foods is what, it, what, what, uh, is what, the, uh, what, is what the label says. Um, I think this has uh, been, uh, in, in, in a way, a wake-up call because a year ago I think we were complacent, I think that complacency is gone and we now, I think consumers can be a lot more confident now than they could a year ago. 
wildlife crime uh, is something that people all over the world are worried about, particularly with endangered spe species like elephants and rhinoceroses. The trade in ivory is very, very well known and we work very, very well with CITES to try and, and squeeze this out of the system. But the trouble is, it's actually getting worse. It's now becoming a big international crime that is connected with trafficking, uh, 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 trafficking of other materials and people across the world. So we've, we, we've come together this week to uh, pass some resolutions on wildlife crime, which is calling for uh, Europol to set up a wildlife crime unit. We've already done this in the UK. Uh, because of uh, crimes like uh, steering, stealing uh, eggs and young birds from nests, particularly again for endangered species, uh, we, we've really tackled this in, in the United Kingdom. And, and what we're largely asking now is for, the, for Europol to do something pretty well along our, our lines. I'm a little disappointed that we didn't broaden the scope to include some of the rural crime, the rural livestock crime. Uh, in the West Midlands we've seen rustling of, of, of sheep, even just last week in, in Staffordshire, pigs last year, cattle, and uh, I think a lot of this is connected with the same type of people who are stealing wildlife, poaching deer for instance. Um, I think that this is, a, however, a positive move uh, and hopefully by looking at how we can, uh, how, how, because this is a form of organised crime, looking at how we can tackle this, this organised crime, uh, uh, it will help wildlife all across the world.